I coded an iOS app in one day and I will explain you how. I got decided to set another goal for myself. After running half a marathon or going to holiday by bike, I decided that I would finally code that app I thought about for a few months. That's nothing huge or revolutionary, believe me, but that's still a challenge. If I do this video, this is not to prove you that I'm better or more productive than you, because I would probably be wrong. I will rather try to show you that we are all capable of far more than we think we are, and I will also explain you all the different steps I went through during this challenge of coding an entire app in one day. After a bowl of oatmeal and soy milk, let's start working. The very first step I go through while I create an app is to clarify my ideas by writing them down in a paper. So let's take a piece of paper, a notebook or whatever and a pencil. We first and foremost have to make a draft of what the app will look like. Well, even if it's a Google notebook and pencil, I prefer switching to the Apple side. Organizing all the different functionalities of your app in different screens is essential before you go through the coding part. Therefore, I will take a moment to design each view of the app. It can be by doing some graphics, adding some buttons or some comments about how the user will interact with the application. You can also add some colors and even sizes so that the process of coding the view will go a lot faster. That step can seem boring or optional, but for me it's really important in a sense where that will make me check if I didn't forget anything vital for the app, like a button or something like that. Just a reminder, we only have one day, less than 24 hours to design and code this application. That's not so much. That's why we will have to make choices and sacrifices. We cannot code the entire app with all its functionalities and the perfect design. You will tell me, you shouldn't have to set such a short deadline. Yes, I shouldn't, but we will all have to face such tight period of time in our real life. We will all have to submit our work sooner than we would like to do. This is why we must make use of agile methods. And here comes the MVP. For those who are already familiar with design software, MVP should recall you something. But this MVP is not for model view presenter. Oh, I didn't tell you about what my app does. I recently read an article saying that our productivity varies over the day and you know how much I value efficiency in my work. So there it is. I got this idea of tracking my energy, focus and motivation over each hours of the day so that I can spot patterns in my days and see when I am the most productive. The idea is using machine learning to know when I should get to work or when I should put my off hours. The app could also tell me why I am more productive than yesterday. Is it because one hour more of sleep or because that coffee I took in the morning? But as you may know, this app cannot be done in only one day. And that's when the MVP comes in. Minimal viable product. The MVP is something based on the 80-20 rule. This is the minimal product that you can put on the market without any fancy feature that users could not even use in their real life. So as we only have one day, we have to focus on the main features that the app will provide. The 80-20 rule aka the Pareto principle says that 80% of the consequences are due to 20% of causes. We have to find that 20% of functionalities. The problem is that when you are not aware of the time you spent on a project, you can quickly lost hours focusing on non-essential details. So next time you work on an app or a project or an assignment, remind yourself the 80-20 rule. The first thing I do when I create an app is to organize my project into three folders model, view and controller. Then I create all my views. I create all the files most of the time, one per screen, and then I write the code. Personally, I don't use much the storyboard because however it can be faster to prototype an app with it, 
it becomes a total mess when the app gets bigger. So I create one class per view that inherits from UI view class and then I give it to my controller. One of the techniques I use to design my app is to set a background color for each object that I add into my main view so that I know exactly where it is positioned. In that way, I can check if the layout is good for every form factor, for every iPhone size, whatever the portrait or landscape mode. Once all of my objects are well positioned, I set off the background color or I set a gray scale color. I like to create a first design with gray shades because it permits me not to focus too much on the design part. In the first time, I code all of my view without wondering about the logic background. What I mean is, for example, if I have to get the last three nodes in the database, I will firstly hard code these fake values. I have a last detail to fix, the scroll that allows the user to select a node. To be sure, I have never used a horizontal picker view and it seems no parameter has been provided by Apple to set one. Honestly, I have absolutely no idea how to do that. Time goes on and I want this challenge to be a success. So I have two solutions. Either I change my ID and I use horizontal technique for the marking, or I find a way to create that damn horizontal picker view. I am a stubborn and I stick to my plan. Therefore, I start to do some research and actually it seems to be a bit complicated. Never mind, I can do this. After a while doing some research and hard thinking, I get to a solution thanks to a YouTube video. YouTube is such a wonderful world in which you can learn so many things. You should retain one thing among that. It's absolutely normal not to know. This is not because you don't know how to do that stuff that you are a bad programmer. The coding world is so vast and even infinite that you obviously cannot remember anything. It is physically impossible to learn everything, every language, every programming technique or design pattern, and that's why Google Google or Stack Overflow are so successful. The moral of the story is the following one. It's normal not to know and it's okay only if you don't accept it. What I mean is that you shouldn't quit at the first obstacle you encounter. You have to look for a solution because the solution exists. You simply have to find it or to invent it. Now that all the visible part is developed, we can work on the submerged part of the iceberg. For such an app, it shouldn't be too long, but for most of the time, this is the longest part, the one that requires most work. For my app, I just have to get the node that the user entered and store it in a database. And then I will display data on a graph so that the user can visualize the evolution of its efficiency. To do so, I got many solutions, but I decided to use Realm. This solution is simple and not so complex to use and it fits perfectly to my project. And I don't have much time so there is no need to complicate my work right now using frameworks that I never used. Once again, I used the 80-20 rule. I first developed the main functionalities because I have to finish my MVP in a few hours and it's useless to get stuck on details. In the first version, the user will be able to enter a node for each criteria and see the evolution of its focus, motivation and energy among the last 12 hours of the day. Many features are still to be developed but the main stuff is here. I will keep on improving the app with more features and intelligence. I put the code on my GitHub profile so that you can check in the description box below and download the application. You can run it on your iPhone if you want and please don't hesitate to give me your feedback and advice and even try to improve the code. That was a challenge, I did it.